<laughs> we should just have like a ad for us. Oh, we should do fake burner ads. That'd be yeah, hilarious. Be awesome. Like all of them somehow relate back to this Lucy. week's sponsor is <laughs> Lucy Soup Kitchen. It is Red Apron. We're not Blue Apron. But we tried. We just send you a box of candy. <laughs> and we're like, here, make this thing. You and don't even a, have to. It's just yeah. a bowl of candy. It's really not that <laughs> yeah. not that complicated. Really a, a one-stop shop. Red Apron. Red Apron. Figure it out. <laughs> Red Apron. The onus is on you. <laughs> Red Apron. No directions needed. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very second episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast, the official show of This Is My Bourbon Shop, where we talk about all things bourbon, what makes it the spirit of Kentucky. And we are back here at the home base with the home base co-hosts, Tanner and Curtis. Hi. What's up? What's going on, you guys? You had a good Monday? Yeah. Didn't have to work, so sure. of course. Oh, screw oh. you. Well, <laughs> it's rainy. That makes It, it makes is very rainy. It's sad <laughs> and cold. So we got a cool little show for you guys tonight. Um, but before we get to it, as you know, we like to drink throughout the show. Um, I'm sipping on Weller 12 in preparation for our review later on, and Curtis is finishing up Noah's Mill, uh, Willet product. <laughs> Excuse me, coughing's already started. It's Willet product, bottled at 114 proof. Uh, it used to be a 15-year age statement. Now uh, the age, age statement is gone, um, but it's still fantastic. Kurt, what do you think about it? definitely like it um we were talking earlier and it was we were talking it tasted like peanut butter and really getting those notes definitely on the finish is when you hit that you get that peanut taste uh but really enjoy it really good bourbon you know I, i've never found uh there to be a whole lot of heat on it either for 114 mm-hmm. proof it's awfully smooth tanner had it too yeah had I, a sip and, of un- it. and unlike last episode when i tasted something completely different from literally everyone else <laughs> uh, i also picked up on the peanut butter on this one so my taste buds aren't as insane as i thought so for those of you who um may be listening to this show for the first time i don't know why stop it go back and listen to the first episode um, there's only two. <laughs> there's only two so far. Yeah. But thanks for listening either way. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the way the way that this is going to go for a, a few weeks is um, I've got a few interviews that I did with folks um, about their experience with bourbon um, and stuff like that. And so what I'm going to do is for the next few weeks after this episode, uh, we're going to be putting out some of those interviews. And then um, three to four episodes down the line, we'll come back, do another topic from the home base. And, uh, you know, have some fun. Get back together. And... Makes it sound like you're colonizing. <laughs> and then we're going to come back to the home, home base. We're going to come back to the home base. And if you're not wearing your scarf, <laughs> yeah. you're out. It's not the wearing the col- uniform like a red flannel right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> red platform flannel? That's a visual joke. For those of you, for those <laughs> yes. of you listening. In an audio medium. <laughs> Gary and Tanner are both wearing red flannels. Yeah. Curtis is not. I, I missed the memo, so uh, yeah. there's that. <laughs> they didn't call me this morning. So, Curtis and Tanner. That's us. Y'all are both uh, graphic designers. We are. And mm-hmm. I'm a graphic design student. I'm not going to put that label on You're myself. You're a designer, too. I'm a designer, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, anyway, so we wanted to talk a little bit this week about, um, as I get more comfortable on the couch. Yeah, you look real uh, comfy. I feel real good right now. I need another mic stand. Mm. I'm looking forward to getting another mic stand once things take off. Yeah. Because, you know... Once we have about 100 listeners, I'll be like, yeah, I can, I can do something not handheld. <laughs> anyway. I can use something other than a rock band microphone. <laughs> you, just look like, you just look like you're hosting like a, like a 60s like love connection type show <laughs> where we're the panelists and you're just, yeah. and Curtis is from. <laughs> yeah. And we're sitting so on we like the Tanner... heart-shaped uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. couch. Yeah. So we got Tanner Janey here all the way <laughs> from uh, Urban, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, being designers, I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about um, bourbon packaging, which may be somewhat boring to some of you who are not graphic designers, but I thought we'd take a shot at it 
and uh, we'll see how it goes. But also, I think that other people can <laughs> appreciate the fact because a lot of times people buy their their bottles or whatever they're getting based off of the bottle. They're like, "Oh, that looks cool." So sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. definitely connection in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there there are plenty of times where I've looked at a bottle. And by the way, this is a, like a, a good portion of this is just going to be on the fly. So sure, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I mean, there's there's been plenty of times where I haven't bought a bottle because I didn't think it looked as as nice as um, you know other ones. And we'll get into more specifics as we go along. Um, but I, I has what specifically has there been that y'all haven't bought because of the that the we package? haven't bought? Haven't yeah. Bought. That's yeah. Oh threw me a curveball today. yeah because um, <laughs> hmm. the the first thing that comes to mind wild turkey oh really? okay yeah. interesting okay. yeah not a fan of the uh i i'm no of the the <laughs> the, the turkey on it like the no, actual turkey? looking turkey yeah, yeah. Like no i i've never really uh liked that packaging excuse me and um <clears throat> i've always thought it looked a little outdated hmm. uh they even went through a, a rebrand a couple of years ago and it didn't really do a whole lot it. um it was just kind of repurposing what they already had and it didn't you know it wasn't different enough for it to you know a- attract a newer a-, a younger audience that yeah. i think they were they were kind of hoping for but you know with the whole matthew mcconaughey <laughs> campaign yeah, yeah what's your thoughts on that it seemed a little stunty to me at first but the more I like read about it and <clears throat> heard about it, uh, then I found out that like he approached them. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. You know? well, well, I mean that's yeah. the that's the official story. So like, that, uh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but like going off of that, it just seems so Matthew McConaughey to be like, hey, sure, I like, I like this bourbon. I'm gonna yeah. Go. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought the original story was that. So they asked him to be like a celebrity, um, like advocator for it, and then he said, "No, that's not what I want to do." I don't want that's, to just come in that's what and, and do one thing. Oh, right, right, right. That's I want to come in and actually form a brand around something that I really enjoy. Because they were yeah. they were trying to challenge Mila Kunis, who was coming out as the Jim, Jim Beam spokeslady. Yeah. Which I I'd still Oh it yes. rubs me the wrong way. Really? Yeah. I don't mind it. There's I I don't know. I don't think it, it rubs me it... the wrong way. I just don't I don't get a connection to it at all. Will you scoot your like, mic up a little bit? I'm keeping this in, by the way. Up? Yes. Towards you. Oh, toward me. As we. Ha No, no, no. Like just up in general towards oh, the yeah. couch that y'all are both sitting on. Stand will allow. That's fine. All right. Anyway, it just that also seemed a little bit stunt-ish. To me. See, I, it, mm, I disagree because really? you got to think Jim Beam isn't really marketed to us. It's more of a, hey, bourbon exists. This is a cheap bourbon. <laughs> we want you to think about us when you're thinking about cheap bourbon. It's not, this is not your bourbon aficionado's bourbon. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not shied away from Jim Beam. Like, Jim Beam doesn't bother me. But I, I think as far as, <laughs> it is the classic, you know, endorsement deal. I think it's fine. Yeah. I, it's a good beginner bourbon. Yeah. Um, it's good to have around just kind of as a, um, something to. Like a mixer. Or mixer sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, but it, I don't, I don't really go for it. I like the Jim Beam single barrel quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, some of their higher end, not higher end necessarily, but, um, any, really anything other than the white label. Their, their facility is baller. Uh, I've actually not been there yet, but I do. (laughs) The, uh, the dog of the show has uh, decided she's going to play with, with a toy and, (laughs) and she just dropped it. And, uh, thank you, Lucy. Anyway. Um, but it, it, Jim Beam has always kind of struck me as one big show. Hmm. You know, I don't get that so much with the, the Matthew McConaughey deal with, with Wild Turkey. That just seems more unique and real, um, as opposed to just having a spokes lady or a spokesperson. Yeah. Like Jim Beam's doing. I mean, but they do have Mila's Barrel in the, uh, in the distillery. That is legit. After four long years. <laughs> yeah whatever anyway anyway so wild turkey is my pick for something that i it, it took me a little bit but once i actually had it um then i was like yeah i, I i'll get this again yeah. so. i will say i was averse to evan williams for a long time mm-hmm. because it looks so generically it is awesome. we're a bourbon yeah. too it's very bland yeah, yeah. so um now I, now having had it i 
I'm fine with. Like it's it's a fine bourbon. And we're just talking the black label. Right? Yeah, just yeah. standard Evan William. Um, it, it it is okay, but like I for a long time I wouldn't if I were buying at that price point, mm-hmm. I would not go Evan just because it looks so generic. Yeah, it's the RC Cola of bourbons, <laughs> where it's just like, hey, these are the attributes that big cheap bourbons have. Let's copy those. I mean, it always to me has looked like if you took a Jack Daniels bottle. Or label and threw it on a Jim Beam bottle. Yeah, exactly. So and there's nothing special about it. Yeah, and that's what that's right because that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say Evan Williams and like I've always jumped over Evan Williams because yeah. I it's not appealing to me. Right. Well, even it, I mean, regardless of the package, I don't like it that mm. much. <laughs> it's fine. Just the black label. I it it's it's just not my my favorite thing. I'll drink sure. it every now and then, but uh, I I would rather have. Um, other bourbons at, at the again at that price point you know yeah. i like the heaven as we established on the last episode i love the heaven hill um bottled and bonds six year and one that i've uh actually really liked is the very old barton too mm-hmm. yeah yeah very old that's Barton's been one decent. that i've always uh been drawn to mm-hmm. especially with the bottle go, like going back to the packaging mm-hmm. it's something there's something nice about that round kind of um bulbous like yeah, yeah. shape of a bottle yeah like and, a copper still of some sort yeah yeah and you know um weller used to have that bottle too mm-hmm. before before their rebrand yeah. now on on the flip side of you know things you haven't bought um i'd i'd if i had never had weller before and based on their new packaging, I would have picked it up immediately. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's so clean. It's so, mm-hmm. so pretty. Have you seen it? I don't think I have. Okay, I'm still on. picturing the old, like, green yeah. caps, big Weller bottles. Well, these, these still have um, green caps on it, but they've done away with kind of like the old style okay. label on it. So hold on a second. I'll okay. Talk amongst yourself. Do a commercial. <laughs> Red apron. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this podcast is available to folks like you. Oh, yeah, I have seen this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. That is nice. Yeah. For those of you at home, I'm looking at the Weller Special Reserve. Yeah, that's. Is it. Is it what? It's similar to that of Buffalo Trace. Yeah. Well, it's the same yeah. distillery. Yeah, yeah no, so, I know. Yeah, it, so it's, it's, a, it's a little bit slimmer than the Buffalo yes. Trace yes, exactly. bottle. But. Um, I like it, yeah. Yeah. I think overall, the, the Weller Special, special Reserve. I, as you will find out, every time that I have to say Weller Special Reserve, I have to repeat <laughs> myself because I never get it right on the first try. Hmm. Anyway. <clears throat> no, I think they did an excellent job with their with, with changing up their packaging. Um, so I'll, I'll repose the question. Is there anything that you have bought because of the, <laughs> the uh, label? Or not necessarily the label, but just the overall. I think that... What... Are we sticking with that price point, too? No, I think like, you know, no, I think it, it it can apply to any okay. any price point. I think the yeah, Woodford yeah. bottle is the, still the bottle to beat. I think Woodford's bottles, for a reasonable price, are just gorgeous. Um, I also think because they do something that has sort of been uh, perpetuated by other brands now, which is the silk screen logo and then the, just the tag at the bottom. I mean, this bottle of of Weller that's here does the, the exact same the thing. The antique yeah. Weller that we're we're gonna get to. And then it's not the foreshadowing. The, yeah, it's not the um, Weller Antique 107. This is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection Weller um, that we're, we're going to be doing. Yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to do a full-on uncorking review of this. Um, and we'll, we'll get into more of it later. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I really do like the Woodford bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, I was honestly pretty happy to see them change up the Double Oak bottle. Mm, yeah. um, when, once it, it they, they were able to differentiate you know the the two styles i i thought that that was really a step in the right direction for them um but it there is a um there's something really eye-catching about the the shape of the yeah. just the regular woodford yeah. Yeah. bottle and i also but, think that that it works well with it because it's more of a short and stout like dessert kind of bourbon you know mm-hmm. and having Definitely. that short stout bottle i think is a good idea and a good step that you were talking about yeah, yeah. with that bourbon. totally trying to think if there's anything that i've bought just because of the label another one Uh, for me sorry no go ahead go ahead curtis all right um (laughs) somebody somebody talk yeah yeah um 1792 has always been one that i i have been drawn to yeah their cap is great 
Um, which one? So before they switched? No, the new cap. The new cap is awesome. I love the new. The cap. new yeah. branding is a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's that gold cap and has the gold seventeen ninety two um, printed across the top, uh, mm-hmm. across the middle, and there's something really impactful about that. Which prior to that, it used to be not as. Uh, I don't want to say like not as good, but it it just wasn't. The new one feels substantial. Yes, like it sure. has a great. The other like one, they handful. took a. It used to be just a wood stopper, and then had like a burlap. Uh, yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the neck, and uh, it doesn't look as. I don't want to say upper class, sort of or sure. classier. Yeah. But with that, I think it took it up. The new right bottle's now. real like. <clears throat> and the logo and everything is real kind of art deco looking yes mm-hmm. um yeah. so it, it it's just got it just pushes it into something that you don't see on packaging in bourbon right yeah um and i mean it, even the the shape of the bottle too um i mean there there are others that are similar ish to it but it really is in a category of its own mm-hmm. in, in terms of the the package um for for me i I don't know. Like I always kind of, <laughs> I'm, I guess unless it's wild turkey, I do more research before I I buy a bottle. Yeah. Um, but if if there were one bottle that I had to, um, say I probably would have bought solely on looks. It's the new Elijah Craig. Mm, um, interesting bottle. Have you have you seen? I have. The, yeah. Okay. Um, the old one was it, it it was fine, um, with the paper label on the front, the mm. big paper label. It was fine. I didn't mind it, but once they really cleaned it up um, and just went to kind of etching right on the, the bottle yeah. and, and having the, the logo and everything on there, I thought that it looked fantastic. Yeah. Um, so if I had to do it all over again <laughs> and start from scratch. You got a, a Men in Black mind wipe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this bourbon thing? <laughs> um, that would probably be the one that I that i would have gravitated towards without knowing too much about just because it's so it, it looks a lot more high end i think than mm-hmm. it actually is i mean it's a 30 dollar ish bourbon in mm-hmm. a in a bottle that would suggest it might be 45 to 50 i think mm-hmm. um so i i yeah i think we would be remiss <laughs> to not mention makers oh i was in, i was going to go i was going to go to makers and just too. be hey we're super iconic because we did True. this thing, but I mean, it still works, and the way they use it is yeah. really smart. Yeah, there's no reason to switch it. No, like, there's no. so that much wax no. label is. If so you did switch it, it wouldn't have the. Which they have. A they would lose the tradition. Well, it's not. It's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not just the the wax label though. It's the paper. It's or, the excuse paper, me. The the, yeah. the wax seal. It's the paper label. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too. I mean, it all of it, and I, I was talking about this earlier today actually too. They've been consist exactly the same since they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since they were founded, and you know, they they get into like the forty six and the special. Um, or the uh, selects and everything, mm-hmm. you know, it changes, but their core product has been exactly the same yep. for 50 years. Yep. I mean, no other, I don't think any other product can say that. Right. And so it, there's something to be said about the mainstay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and the tradition behind it. Not that there aren't other um, bourbons with a tradition. Um, you know, their Old Forester has been around longer than anything else on the market mm. right now they um, switched their labels as well yeah they did and they look really nice it's now. cleaner definitely. yeah yeah um yeah the only other, here's a question yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Do you, what do you think that people outside of not necessarily just con- like outside of kentucky but what do you think they notice is the oh this is the staple of bourbon do you think it's Jim Beam? Do you think it's Maker's Mark? I think Mark? it's Maker's. Like, they see the packaging, they're like, that's Well, it. okay, here's... That's here's, bourbon. Here's how I see it. <clears throat> that's bourbon. I see, I see Jim Beam as being a more worldwide bourbon. Sure. Um, and it's just kind of something that everybody reaches for. I think that Maker's and Woodford, though, are the early game, high class, or mm-hmm. high end bourbons. Um, so, you know, Jim Beam might be something that people start with and they go, oh, th- I get this. But then, you know, as soon as somebody's like, oh, I got a bottle of Woodford, they're like, you got a bottle of Woodford? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think that um, we can go a, a, about 
ten fifteen dollars up and go. I think the the makers in in Woodford is what people look at as being the um, the iconic bourbon. I think a brand that has done a really good job of being like really um, substantial and noticeable uh, on the market is Bullet. Just from hey, we're gonna wrap the lower label and it's this bright in your face orange or if it's the rye the green um which i guess is the same with my bourbon uh that's all right and we can talk about rise too yeah i mean but, <laughs> i mean it's still bullet right like it's still their brand yeah totally um just that it's they've done a really good job of, for being such a young company of building Definitely. a substantial brand already yeah um i would like i they're not quite maker level just because <laughs> makers has so many years of experience below their belt they're in like their second or third generation of distillers or or owners or whatever but But i i think bullet has done a like i put bullet up there with recognizability with makers in woodford sure from just an instant that's bullet do you know that they threw um a bottle of bullet into an episode of deadwood really Mm -hmm. i love deadwood yeah just uh, because of the like whole frontier looking bottle they threw it in and you know, everybody's like, oh, look, it's a bourbon that's been around for... But, Super you know, big anachronism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just a bourbon that's been around for, you know, 20 years. <laughs> right, yeah. And they threw it back into, a, you know, Frontier Day. Yeah. Or Frontier that Era. That was a great show. I've, uh, my father-in-law loves it. I've not awesome. taken the time to, to get into it. But, uh, yeah. Movie. Are they really? Yep. Because it ended on a season finale instead of a series finale. This is off the rails. Sorry, but... No, it's oh. okay. <laughs> They're going to wrap it up. This is what we're here I'm for. very excited. Yeah. <laughs> Three seasons in a movie. Yeah. Was it? Doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> um, I, I'm curious to, to hear what you guys think about <clears throat> the need for rebranding in, in the, the bourbon market. Because I, and I'll, I'll set this up by saying, you know, we're in the bourbon boom mm-hmm. or the whiskey boom right now. So yeah. I think that it was natural for for companies or, or for brands like Jim Beam or Elijah Craig um, and, you know, Wild Turkey, again, to a lesser extent, to take the time and revisit their brand. Mm-hmm. Um, because I wanted to reach more people. But do, do you do you all think that there's as much of a need with something like bourbon to, to rebrand? I mean, whoever wants to go first. I, I, I personally think it's a... I mean, it's it's always with rebranding going to be a case by case basis, but I think if you were, I think there's a certain level of iconic. Well, there could be a certain level of iconic where you don't really want to touch it, like makers. But then look at in a different world, like Bud Light, right? They rebranded two or three years ago, and it's fantastic now. Yeah. But they had yeah. super recognizable cans before. Yeah. But it was, but it, was dated. it was getting really dated. And if, if you if you are recognizable, but you're only recognizable because you're super dated, then that might be the time to refresh. Um, as for some of the smaller, you know, bourbons that have been going for a long time, but nobody have no real cachet, I think this bourbon boom was a perfect time to rebrand because then you can sort of have fresh, set, fresh sets of eyes look at you and be like, that's a cool bottle. I know nothing about this. I didn't know that it's not really been that successful. This is a cool looking bottle and I want to pick it mm-hmm. up. Yeah, and I th- I would agree with you on uh, a case by case uh, basis on whether they need to rebrand or not. I think having that tradition is is great and what you need to create the longevity of the brand. Yeah. But also, at some point, there's going to be something that's dated and it needs to be updated. Yeah. Uh, at some point, Maker's Mark is probably going to have an updated version they're never gonna lose the like you know the label the red, or yeah or the red wax like that's right. not gonna change and it shouldn't change but i think at some point maybe 30 40 years down the road you know it's just gonna become dated like other things Are gonna and, surpass it. yeah and it's just gonna up that to okay this is the time period which, sure which everything goes through i yeah. mean I, I think you see that with with like coke right like Coke's brand has stayed the same, but if you look at their cans, they've changed drastically. Yeah. So a lot of times it may not be a full rebrand that's needed, but maybe it's just a, a rearrangement of elements, Re- yeah. mm-hmm. something to look a little fresher, yeah. you know, picking up on trends but not being too trendy. You know, it, like, 
I doubt there are many bourbons out there that need a full-on rebrand at a certain level that we're talking about, obviously. Um, but a lot of them could use some freshening up. Mm-hmm. And so maybe we should back down to package again, like the actual mm-hmm. um, bottle presentation and everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm going to try to throw this out to you, and I may have already asked it. But do y'all have a favorite bottle or package for Blanton's? I was gonna say Blanton's yeah. too. <laughs> Blanton's. I think it's it's so different from anything else you see. Yeah. And the reasoning behind it of it being the bourbon barrel, it's just it's perfect and was yeah smart to use. I'll be I'll be decision among the ranks. I think Woodford. I think Woodford is just killing the game. I think that what what they've done that like Blanton's is super clever and. They use their their brand really wisely, and you know the the collectible caps and and all yeah. that sort of different. Yeah, brand and elements. that's a good note for anyone that hasn't doesn't know that. Right, is that Blanton's has a horse running and stride all the way through, and it spells out Blanton's, and you can collect it and get it on like a wood, uh, bourbon barrel stave. It's really cool. It's a mm-hmm. collector's item. Just smart, smart marketing, smart yep. packaging. Yeah, but I think for for Woodford. The simplicity is key, and that Woodford always sticks out on a shelf to me. I try to look, you know, you see different shelves and different uh, amounts of bourbon and, and different shelves in, in a liquor store, but for some reason, Woodford's simplicity, I guess, is what draws me to it every time. The mm. one that I, I'm surprised we haven't talked about yet is Willet. Mm. With the, the pot still oh, yeah. bottle. Yeah. I mean, that that is really something that you don't see, and I don't know if it's a favorite necessarily, Um I mean, I really like it. I like the fact that it's so different. It's such a um, completely removed experience from everything else on the market. Mm. Um, but it, thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts? I, I personally, when I'm in the store, I don't notice it that much. Yeah, I don't even. Really? Yeah, yeah. it just huh. kind of glaze over it. I notice that it's a different bottle. And I think that goes to show on what it's not just the bottle that differentiates it. Yeah. It's what's being put on the bottle and how it's being packaged as well, not just the bottle. Yeah, sure. Because with Willet, I personally don't think that it's the label itself is that good. Agreed. I don't think there's clarity to it. They have a gold foil, I believe. Um, I think it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. but I don't think it does anything for it. I. Okay, so maybe... Maybe what I'm getting at more is that I like the the shape of the <laughs> sure yeah it's definitely, the visceral yeah. experience of the bottle, yes. but less so it like could be the actual. Utilized. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Where what would you like to see on that? Now I'm going to put the designer on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, when you've got a bottle that unique, instead of trying to show off with gold foil and all these other techniques, I think you just embrace the shape of the bottle. Well, it's not. Yeah, yeah it's not like a, a paper label or anything. It's it's just right on the the bottle itself. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I personally think that a, per, a paper label would help it a little bit just because... Maybe accentuate the bottle. Yeah. Sure, yeah, and, and, and help the just the, the name stick out more. I'm going to make a bold move here. Okay. And I say that the bottle itself should be changed. Okay. I don't Fair enough. They, I don't think they need it. Fair enough. Have you... Do you, uh, do you look at it... Do enough people look at it and say, that bottle is Willet? Hmm. Well, the the brand name is Willet Pot Still Reserve, so I think <clears throat> by associating it with you know how they they distill their bourbon, um, and the actual name for it, you know, I I, I mean yeah. it, it makes sense that that's what they do, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I don't think that it is necessary to sell that that bourbon necessarily. I no, I said necessary yeah. twice in that sentence, but <laughs> I think uh, it's a little too obvious personally. Mm. Really? Yeah. I don't think that's what people look at. And even though it's Will It Pop still, I don't think people look at it as, <laughs> oh, me. the bottle has to be... I mean, it'd be like shaping bullet like an actual bullet. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's some cleverness that can be said as like, it, it almost becomes hokey. I can see that. Yeah. I just don't think it works with how they're, the, the label and how it, you see the name and see the actual stuff works. Yeah. I don't think it works for him personally. Yeah. Um, the bottle is badass. 
Don't get yeah. me wrong. Sure. It's a really cool bottle. Sure. I just wonder if it's right for their, their brand. It seems like there are elements there that could work, but they're not working together. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's It's conflicting. Yeah. Well, let's move on to um, talking a, a little bit more about higher-end bourbons. Um, okay. we, you know, we, we've hit the, the bottom of the shelf. We've hit more of the middle range, too. But mm-hmm. now I'd, I'd, <clears throat> this might be a little bit shorter of a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, because there, there are a couple that really come to mind for me in, in the higher-end realm for, in, for packaging. And it's not that I necessarily like them. Um, but I think that once you get into the higher end, I'm gonna look these up. Spectrum. Sorry, oh no 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 no! Because <laughs> I don't I don't know what high end bottles look like really, so I'm just having well, it I think for it's reference. Probably gonna refer to Pappy as one. That that was exactly yeah. where I was gonna okay. go with it. The fir- the very first one I was gonna talk about was Van Winkle Lot B. Mm. Um, the yeah the Van Winkle Lot B 12 year, um, and we we have the three of us talked about the simplicity of that package before. Yeah. Uh, and how it's it's not something. You know, naturally, it's not something that is going to be on the store or on the, on the shelf now just because people go, oh, i got to find my pappy. <laughs> yeah. um, but there's nothing really super special about that, that label or anything. It's just, it says the name, it says where it's distilled, mm-hmm. um, the proof, the age, and that, that's basically it. Um, and then, you know, you move on up the line of the of Van Winkle products. It's bottles with an old guy on the front. <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, there's nothing like super appealing about that to me. Mm-hmm. Now the product's good, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Like I, I wouldn't have known how good it was if the stories weren't there. Yeah. Um, well, that's what drives the brand. Sure. I think it drives yeah. the brand the, now. It's the story. Yeah. It's yeah. The stories, and uh, nobody can really put. A label on it if you yeah. heard a pappy like you're like oh pappy yeah that's yeah. awesome you ask him to name what it looks like no, no clue. clue but yeah but if we go back 10 years <clears throat> excuse me that story is virtually non-existent you know i mean it wasn't until 10 ish years ago that all these stories started creeping up about how great pappy was and people were still really? drinking it okay but once the bubble burst yeah mm. And people knew about it. That's when everybody was like, "Oh, we have to get this." Right. And you could never find it. But ten years ago, hold on. Dog back. No. I can't get to it. Go get something else. Wait, I can. You're not gonna get that. It's too small. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. I lost my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about the story. Oh well, you know, ten plus years ago. It was just on the store, or it was just on the shelf. I keep saying on the store. You could go to a store and it'd be sitting up on the roof, and you go, "There's Pappy. I can't get it. It's on the store. I literally can't That's reach it." That's literally top ladder. shelf. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, the point, the point of that was awful. Um, anyway, the point of all that was that it was on the shelf, but it just wasn't being bought. Mm. Um, and was it still that high of a price? No. Okay. No. You could get um, you could get the the twelve year for like thirty dollars. Oh wow! Hmm. Yeah, and the the Weller twelve, which now goes for about forty five or fifty dollars, you could get for twenty five. So huh. as soon as people started talking, and as soon as you know people like um, Fred Minnick, who is a um, He's a, a whiskey writer, um, and he, got, he goes and does tastings at competitions, like blind tastes. Sure. Um, in, like, 2011, he rated Weller 12 as being the best bourbon in the world. Mm. So as soon as that came out, everybody lost their mind. Sure. And they went and bought it up. Well, now you can't find it anymore. It's allocated, yeah. which is ridiculous. Right. Because it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. Mm. I mean, I, I love the Weller 12, um, but it's it's just so, so hard to find. Mm-hmm. And you're getting people selling it for $100 on the secondary market or $150. And I mean, even oh, it's once, outrageous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, it. you know, go back to the Pappy too. 
you know, you have people trying to sell the the fifteen year for fifteen hundred dollars on the secondary market. Hundred dollars I mean, a year, and even <laughs> even some like liquor stores will Only jack you. up there. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you said fifteen and fifteen hundred. That's <laughs> math. <laughs> anyway, but you have some liquor stores too, even jacking up the price that much, which it. It seems ridiculous, but there are people who are going to buy it. And we're, mm-hmm. we've taken yeah. kind of a hard left turn into the, the bourbon market, which is, you know, it's something I'd, I'd... I mean, they go hand in hand, right? Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I would rather save, like, you know, talking about prices and, and price points for... Like, actually talking about that for, sure. for another day. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, the, the, the point in all of this is that I, I wouldn't have bought Pappy 10 years ago based solely on the label. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, that makes sense. No. And I don't know if I would have bought Weller either. If I came into it not knowing anything about bourbon, I would not even look at that, to be honest. No. No. Not a chance. Um, but then, you you know, I I will put... And maybe we should define... We should define high-end. Um, that's true, too. To, to me, I think that's... I, <sighs> Let's just start from bottom. Bottom, we're going, like, okay. our Evan Williams, our Heaven Hills... And those yeah. and those are those are to me twenty dollars and under. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. Now once you start getting to the twenty to maybe I'd say forty five. Forty five yeah, fifty range. Those um, are your mid that's, range. Yeah, bourbon. that's mid. But anything above fifty I think is not not always high end or top shelf. But you know, it's those that you kinda have to reach for a little bit more. So, so Blanton's is in that range, right? Blanton's is in that range, yeah. yeah. It's it's a now a $65 bourbon. Okay, that's what I thought. Which, uh, there's, a, there's a store in Richmond that I saw recently that was selling it for $85. Mm. <laughs> and again, this used to be a $50 bourbon, which I used to be a $40 bourbon. I can only imagine what it bourbon. would be uh, sold at in, like, Florida or something. Oh, I can't imagine. You know what's funny is that it, it, there are nice little pockets all over the country where they actually sell it at retail price. Mm. And it's hard to find those, but if you find uh, an ABC store... Um, which is the alcoholic beverage control, yeah, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, if you find stores that are strictly monitored by the ABC, they sell at MSRP. Mm. Um, so you can go to to other states and find Weller Twelve for twenty five or thirty dollars, as opposed to the forty or forty five that right. it is in, in Kentucky now. Right. Um, and that's not to say that Kentucky is necessarily at a disadvantage. We have a, a you know, a, a wellspring of bourbon here. Yeah. I mean, we can find it anywhere we go. We the we're, we're the best. Yeah, we're the we're, best selection. We get the first pick. Yeah. The most accessible. Exactly. But, you know, as far as prices, you know, there are stores that know <laughs> yeah. people are going to buy it. Um, and a, a good recent example of that for me has been the Buffalo, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Mm. Um now, and this will kind of again lead us into our review for the, the episode, which is the the William Larue Weller uh, release of, for twenty seventeen for the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Anyway, these are bourbons and and rye that are supposed to go for ninety to one hundred and ten hundred and twenty dollars. Not last week, but the week before, I went into a store. I went into a store that will go unnamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they were selling a bottle of george t stag from the antique collection which again is supposed to be 110 dollars for 300 dollars wow. jesus not secondary market <laughs> this is primary this yeah. was this was in store gosh and i mean i i've seen stores that are selling it for as high as 800 dollars or 850 dollars that's insane yeah but the point in all this, though, is that we sit here and we go, I can't believe that they're marking it up, you know, nine, ten times as much. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, there are people who are still going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your market dictates how much you can do that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, anyway. And now we're just getting into economics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is supply and demand. <laughs> this is a weird... This is my, economic, weird this is my economics podcast. Anyway. Um, Drunk enough. <laughs> <laughs> something d-o-o economics what? voodoo no. economics 
Ferris Bueller. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that part out. Anyway, so... <laughs> Keep it in there. I don't know. Somebody will get your... Yeah, somebody will get it. Your really niche Ferris Bueller reference. Everybody's quoting uh, that voodoo economics line from yeah. Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Everyone's going to remember that one. Anyway, so we're going to talk about... Um... <laughs> no comment. Just I really keep, hope there was a hard cut just down. now. Nope, and, and nope, we're just leaving like it. Giggling. Okay, we're cool. leaving it right there. Cool, cool, cool. So we're going to um, move into the Uncork and Review uh, of this episode for... Take me to ten the, first, jeez. <laughs> the WLW uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection 2017 release. A couple of things real quick, um, kind of to, to wrap up the, the packaging um, conversation. There's not uh, too much in the way of, of labeling or anything on it, um, at, at least at first glance. There's a whole spiel on the back about the, the creation of the bourbon and um, you know why it's such a big deal. But on the front, you know, it's just the name. Um, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, the proof. Uh, it says it's barrel proof, uncut, unfiltered. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. Um, so that, again, goes back to kind of the... Um, higher end packaging that we were talking about earlier um, with stuff like Blanton's or, or Van Winkle where it's, you know, it doesn't need a whole lot to show in, in order to get people to buy it. Yeah. So anyway, um, a couple of things about this bourbon. Um, first off, <laughs> I'm crazy excited to, to try this. <laughs> I have been... Um, Dying. It's been sitting up on my shelf for a couple of weeks, waiting for waiting for this, or just about a week or so. Um, this is the the Weller release is the only weeded bourbon of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Uh, it is twelve month twelve months. <laughs> Thirty minute bourbon. Yeah, yeah very quick. <laughs> it's twelve years, six months. Um, it is again uncut, unfiltered, at one hundred and twenty eight point two proof. Um, so, do you guys want to do the honors of oh boy. cracking it open? That's all you, homie. <laughs> I don't yeah. trust myself with a bottle that expensive. <laughs> well, let's try it. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Special shout out to Swan the Bourbon Guy for hooking us up with this one. And, um, oh, maybe. Um, it was a bit of a hunt, but you know what? For our, our very second episode... <laughs> Gar is going to break the bottle. Here, you want me to... Yeah, I'm going to let you grab that then. <laughs> do another sponsor. This week's, this week's sponsored by Hard to Open Labels. You want to keep people out of your product? Keep it safe? Try Hard to Open Labels. Hard to Open Labels speaks for itself. And our sister company, those beers that don't have twist off caps. Because screw those guys. Alright, uh, I got. Uh, hold on. I got the wrapping part of it off. Uncork it right in front of the mic for yeah, yeah. good. You got this. Oh, hey. oh so nice. satisfying. All right. All right, we're going to take just a very quick little break to pour us a couple of glasses, and we'll be right back with you. What do you smell? What do you smell, though? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Right? The smell I is enjoy this fantastic. aroma. All right, we're back from pouring our... our Review bourbon of the night, and uh, man, oh man, does that yeah. smell good? It smells real good. Mm-hmm. Oh. We're definitely in agreement to that one. Yeah, <laughs> lots of Weirdly, lots it of smells fruit. like tomato soup. Yeah. Well, sorry, oh, I swear. <laughs> Call back again. Yeah, no. Oh gosh, I decided. Um, I decided to save that for an actual review somewhere down the line. We might actually oh, do really, that at, really? at Christmas okay. time. Yeah. Well, nobody's gonna get that one well, then. Hey, stop. <laughs> That, so I, I just made a reference to something that doesn't exist. <laughs> Beautiful. It's out there. It's foreshadowing. Yeah. Hold on. Take a bite. Hey. Yeah. She's trying to hump him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, irresistible. That's nice. It's irresistible. Oh, I went straight to that. Just Robert Palmer. That'd be enough respect. Like uh, Rodney Dane. Anyway. So... Yes, it really does smell fruity. <laughs> it smells great. Yeah. Like, I not, want this as a candle. Yeah. No spice really. No, not there, at all. Which I, I don't no. I don't mind. You know, some people really want the, the spice on those, but man, that no. it bodes well for, for what we're about mm. to indulge in. So guys. Let's talk about the nose first a little bit. Sure. Like what do you yeah, guys, let's do what it. Do you think on it? 
<laughs> I like how you're just trying to make Perry wait as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, like, we're talking about the history of this bourbon? Yeah. Can we the uh, mash bill on this guy? <laughs> who is William LaRue Weller? Uh, well, the mash bill, um, for anybody who doesn't, who doesn't know, um, and you probably don't, do you, do you know the difference between the weeded whiskey and the um, just a regular bourbon? Or a weeded bourbon and a regular bourbon? No. So, Tell me, um, Perry. With a weeded bourbon, they've replaced the, the rye... In uh-huh. the mash bill and used wheat instead. Oh, okay. Um, just to it's all in the name. Um, give it a little bit smoother, um, smoother flavor. Anyway, I can just sit here and smell this all night. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I get again some fruit on there. Almost like baked goods. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting like candied, like. Cherries yeah. for some reason. And that might be the fruit. Oh, that yeah, cordial cherries for sure. Yeah, like cordial cherries yeah. is what I'm getting. Wow, that's yeah, that's accurate. But not anything like super sugary or, or no, 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 just, no. you know, the baked goods is another way to put it. It just yeah. it smells generically sweet in a good way. Oh man. But not like saccharin. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, the great the cherries, the baked goods, not not spice. It's so pleasant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not overpowering. Right. Yeah. You're not catching any ethanol in that. Mm. And that might be a, a product of the glass, but I don't know. Well, guys, let's do it. Let's dive in. Cheers. 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 <laughs> okay yeah wow wow huh well that finish just doesn't oh, stop does it no no it's, it's, it's still going oh my gosh it's still going <laughs> it's like the finish has that smoky like barbecue. oh yeah yeah like flavor i mean just at the very end but then it gets kind of sweet too yeah oh I'm really getting the, like, when we smell it, the the nose, all fruit, yeah. and then you drink God, it. That is a long. Even break. then, you keep getting more of the fruit, but then it somehow transitions to a, like this smoky barbecue. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's that Kentucky hug right in the middle of the chest. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna take another sip because I want to. Yeah, same. Preach. This is the hottest high proof bourbon I've had in a while. Mm. Like I would definitely put this in the above hundred proof range. Yeah, but that burn is not overpowering. No, it, it almost feels all. intentional. Like it, it almost had like it, it balances everything out. I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's interesting. So. uh <laughs> Such an elongated experience. It is. It, it takes yeah. it takes a long time. And, and sorry for anybody who's going, just get on with it. But like it, it you're listening to it basically in real time as yeah, we're all yeah. kind of processing the yeah. the the flavors and everything on it. Man, there is just so much there. I wouldn't have known that it was a, a Weller product. No, no, not at all. I, I, I never would have known. But again, the highest. Weller product out there, other uh, highest proof out there other than this, is the Antique 107, and that's 107 proof. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, 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 I just got a little something else. Mm. The front end's real creamy. Yeah, the front end's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's that that candy yeah. mm-hmm. taste you're getting. The spice in the middle is. Like satisfying but not overpowering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like towards towards the very end of it, that's where everything kind of like <laughs> ex- oh, yeah. explodes. It just explodes and it's in just... your face. This might be the highest proof bourbon you've had? That I've had well, that I've had that I'm not like clamoring for water or something else. Yeah. Right? Like it's Well let's let's try a little experiment. Let's put a couple drops of water in it. Okay. Um and see if that smooths out some of the spice and adds a little bit um adds a little bit of flavor to it but not not too much no i got it no you sure 
Yeah. I've put water in my bourbon before, Perry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just added a little bit of water to, to this. We're going to give it a couple stirs, shake it around. Um, give it another um, nose to see if anything... Oh. Huh. Yeah. I think it, mine has changed quite a bit. Mine has too. It's went from super fruity to a little more caramel for me. That's what I. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I was gonna say, actually. But you don't lose it. No, 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 you don't lose no. That. But the the caramel really gets almost like um, a caramel apple to the to the front. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. Mm. And that's mm. what you taste too mm. when it. Yep. And the burn is almost completely gone. gone. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. Really. That's wild. There's like a little bit of a sting, but overall, I mean, it's just yeah. very caramely and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I would I prefer it with a little, just a couple drops of water, just okay. to kind of take the heat off. But I mean, that that isn't to say that I wouldn't drink it without the the water too. Yeah. And again, I only I only put three drops in. Kurt put two, and you just did a couple too, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, verdict. We'll start with Tanner and work our way around. How do you want to do this? Um, are we doing a star rating? Are we doing out of ten? Are we doing? Oh, yeah. Let's. I don't want to. I, I rate. Doing a grade. Sure. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go with the grade. What are we taking into consideration? Are we taking price into consideration? I've, never, I've never see. liked grades. Can we do like stars or something? <laughs> out of ten. You want to do sure. out of ten? I think out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do an yeah. out of ten rate. We're, you're you're witnessing us trying to figure this out yeah. on the fly in real time. <laughs> in media res, we're making podcast history. Because um, <laughs> with grades, you can't really like what distinguishes between an A minus and an A plus. Okay, so here so. here's what here's what we'll do. Um, we could do this one of two ways. We could do flat out of ten, or we could do um, nose palette price. Hmm. And okay, we could that. do like on nose palette price, it could be each out of five, and then you know a total out of fifteen. Yeah, sure. So what do you what do you guys prefer? Like is that, that too is it too complicated? No, no, no. I think that's right. Yeah, no, I think that's right <laughs> yeah. because I, I I would give it different grades based on different things. I think the nose is probably a five. I would smell this all day long. Um, it it is one of the better nosing bourbons that I've ever <laughs> that I've ever smelled i guess i it's yeah. it's really really good i mean, it's, nosing it, too much yeah. yeah and it's uh the nose that knows <laughs> to <can't sound>. uh <laughs> it's interesting how it changes with water um but both of them were so pleasant that i, I think the nose is a five this has been like the really the, like the most significant change i've ever experienced by adding a couple of drops of water to a bourbon yeah um so should should we go with do one with water, one without water, or we just no? I think that just comes into effect with the okay, yeah. okay, cool. Um, on what was the other one? Palette and Palette. price. Yeah, I'm torn. I think it was good without water. I think it was great with water. I agree. Um, I completely agree. So I would honestly, in order to sort of average that out, would maybe say a four on pallet overall. Um. I've had better bourbon straight. Maybe not a better bourbon at that high of a proof straight. Sure. Um, but once you factor in how smooth it was and how well it went down with water, I think that that's <coughs> sort of where I sit, personally. Yeah. And then price. Now, let um, full disclosure, um, we did buy this at market price. So... Um, <laughs> We've started a new system of splitting um, <laughs> some more expensive stuff um, between the three of us, and this was uh, $110. Um, so anyway, for the price, Tanner, as you get viciously attacked by this 15-pound dog. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think price is probably the weak point. I don't know if... Anyway, I will say this is sort of the, the, uh, the bourbon novice of the group. I don't know if it's substantially better to warrant the price, um, if that makes sense. I don't know if it is. We're also babysitting, apparently, during. Uh, <laughs> oh, she got your water cap. Oh, okay. 
yeah, I don't know if it's if it is so good that it is worth the, the price of the three figure it. price. Yeah, sure. Um, so I would say that's probably for me personally, uh, probably like a two out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Again, I, I've I've had similar quality bourbons at a much lower price point. So your composite score would be what? Eleven out of fifteen. Five, four, and two. Yeah, eleven. So, um, I mean that that puts you, what like a like a B grade? Yeah. You think you'd put it at it? You'd put it at um, a solid B B plus? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was around the 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 B plus A minus range in my head, so that makes sense. Yeah. Kurt, what you think? All right. Uh, <laughs> the nose. I think the nose. I would give it a four out of five because the nose is great it smells amazing you get those fruity notes you add the water you get more of those uh caramely notes which i i really enjoyed i'm giving a four though just because that's it was just the fruit that i smelled okay and i wanted just a little more of that that spice sure um as far so Four out of five on the nose. Palette wise, that's where I think that it got where I differ is I think it got really good on the palate. Because you, you went from having that nose of fruity and it starts out on the uh, front really that you get those like cordial cherries and then as it goes down and finishes you get those smoky barbecue flavors that are me personally I really like. So I'm gonna give sure the palette I think. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, and then you also get when you add water, you get a totally kind of different experience. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why I give it a five is you're getting so many different things, and taking into account putting the waters. Yeah. Um, drops in. So I think that price. Mm, price. Price. Yeah. Hundred and ten dollars. You said. I did. Yes. Yeah, I I think I have to bring it down to like a three and a half on price. Sure. Um, it is really good. And what what would be some comparable? Oh gosh. At this price. Um. Not to put you on the spot. Again, like the the higher the higher end pappies, the older pappies. Um. Stuff like the the age dated Elijah Craig's like eighteen and twenty three year, um, shoot man. Yeah, I mean I, I get it. Jefferson's yeah. has a has a couple releases that are um at that that higher point too, mm-hmm. um. And and there the, all of the things that I just named too aside from, from Pappy maybe, um, are more readily available. Yeah. So, you know, the the hundred and ten dollars that we paid wasn't just for the 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 bottle itself. It was also for the fact that you know you get it yeah. once a year. Yeah, True. you know, All right. it's not sitting on shelves like. Yeah. Um, it's not but, always there for one hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's not always there hardly at all. Okay, so. in that case, I give it a I'll give it a four on that. Okay, I think that makes sense, um, with all the context behind it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So all together. Cool. So that was that? five, four, and three and a half. Oh wait, wait, wait. Four. Oh okay. Five, four, and four. Yep. So that puts you at a fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I can live with that. Um, for me, the the nose without water really was. Um, it was a thirteen. Thirteen. Was it thirteen? Yeah, it goes out of thirteen. Five, four, four. Oh yeah, because it was. Sorry. Yeah. Thirteen out of fifteen. Sorry. Whatever. Still good. We're not we're we're designers. We're not mathematicians. <laughs> um, the nose for me, I wasn't like at first. I thought it was good, but it wasn't just like crazy impressive. I don't know what that noise was that I just made with my mouth. But um, at first, the <laughs> um, at first the nose without water wasn't overly impressive, but I liked it. Um, it just wasn't as complex as I was hoping that it was going to be, yeah. especially at a. Um, uncut unfiltered 128 proof bourbon yeah um as soon as i added water though that's when you know as we established that's when it really started opening up for me and that i mean this is easily with water 
the best nose I've ever, I've ever found on a bourbon. Nice. Um, and even going back to it, um, just as we've been sitting here, it's not just the, the caramel and like the, the appleiness of it. It's also like, I, I can very clearly smell the oak mm-hmm. um, and, and just all the, the wood that it sat in for, for 12 and a half years. Um, palette so well i guess on the nose i would probably give it a um a four and a half um just because like without water it was a four with water it was five um so i'm gonna i'm gonna average it out to about four and a half um palette all all around i didn't really have any any problem with one way or another so i'm gonna give it a real solid five um i mean you know i i I liked it with without water. I loved it with water. Yeah. Same. Um, but that being said, that like was on the high end of the <laughs> mm-hmm. of the appreciation spectrum. So I, I definitely am going to give this uh, um, the the palette of five. And then on the on the price point, this is what really trips me up. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm not going to go for this at a bar. Right. Mm. No. You know, yeah. Don't you? I mean, even even on special occasions, I don't think that I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Hey, what what do you you got you got any of that Buffalo Trace Antique Collection Weller <laughs> yeah. sitting around that you're uh, gonna you're gonna pour for? Partially because it's a mouthful. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got any of that Buffalo Trace Antique Collection? Like, just become yeah, an no, auctioneer. No, no, no. Yeah. I just I'm not a good speaker, um, <laughs> as I do an audio medium. Um, the it, again, the price is really what kind of trips me up, but. You know, we we had to hunt for this a little bit. We had to kind of work for it. Um, it's limited, it, but with with everything that I just said about it, I would I would probably give the price a, a four. Mm. Um, I mean, and that that's with or without water. Um, <laughs> Price stays the same with or without water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not a concentrated well, I mean, price. Well, I like my, my, my appreciation for it with or without water, you know, is independent of the sure, sure, price. Sure. So, sure. you know, if that's the price point, um, I, I think what, what I would, if I were you in, <laughs> in, in our situation, I would find somebody to split it up with unless you yeah, can go for yeah, it and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, you know, shell out the the hundred and ten dollars or three hundred you know if you find it for that um that's nice that's nice dog that just best best just let her finish clark (laughs) he's just yakking on the bone (laughs) (laughs) so uh, i I, i'll go ahead and give the the price of four i i don't have any any problem with that so that puts me at what 13 and a half so i had four and a half five and and four so that you know I, i don't have any any problem if if I had bought my the the bottle alone, first off my wife would have killed me. <laughs> I wouldn't have been happy with myself either. I'll, I'll be real honest with you. But um, I, I would have probably passed on it if I didn't have you know somebody else to share it with. Sure. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a four. She's just getting comfortable. She's warming up to you, Tanner. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> It's not my wife. That's the dog that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, to recap, Tanner is 11 out of 15. Um, Kurt was 13 out of 15, and I'm 13 and a half out of 15 on the uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection Weller release. Um, so, I, I man, I am real happy with, with how this turned out. I look forward to pouring another glass in the future, but this yeah. is, is going to be a special occasion. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. A special occasion bourbon. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping things up. Tanner, where can people find you on uh, social media? I am at Tanner B. Chaney, C-H-A-N-E-Y, everywhere. <laughs> Instagram, Twitter. Curtis has to go and look up where he is. Again. <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> Got that brand, homie. Yeah. So, Instagram is Kurt Con. And Twitter is Kurt underscore con 15. Make people work for it. Yeah. 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 I had to work for it. They better. (laughs) Yeah. Um, my personal accounts are Peter P Ritter, 1492. Um, just about every, 
Yeah. Weird. <laughs> you know what? I was born on the on the the ship coming over to America that with was Columbus cool. too. Um, never mind. That was was that terrible. a Bueller reference? That was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a horrible joke. I'm gonna yeah. cut that one out for sure. Um, Perry is Dorian Gray. Actually, he's got a por- <laughs> he's got a portrait upstairs that yeah. is aging horribly, and somehow <laughs> it's cracked in all the wrong places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I'm P Raider fourteen ninety two. Just about on all platforms. If you want to find the show, we are uh, my Bourbon Shop on Instagram and Twitter. This is my Bourbon Shop on Facebook. And if you would like to reach us via email, it's this is my Bourbon Shop at gmail dot com. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate any reviews or downloads that you are giving us just as we're starting out. We look forward to pumping out some new content for you in the next few weeks. Um, real happy that, uh, that we're, <laughs> that we're doing this. This has been a, yeah. a real fun little mm-hmm. experience so far and, uh, I, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Uh, so Tanner, Curtis. Thank you all so much for being here. Yeah, well, appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. And y'all, for until next time, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. I'm Tanner. And this is my Bourbon Podcast. We're also sponsored by Round Space. <laughs> <laughs> Round Space. Yeah, you can make a website, sure. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> Roundspace is here for your uh, your technical support, just from a moral side. <laughs> like, oh, you can do nah, it. Nah, you got it, buddy. Oh, no. no. yeah. yeah, but I can't. I don't understand why the link's not working. Oh, you got it. Oh, you'll figure it out. Can we help you? No, but we can no. give you a lot of encouraging talk. <laughs> Roundspace. Roundspace. Well, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>